Michael, $200. Wow. Thank you, Michael. Michael says, yesterday you answered a question on infinity saying, why do you care? How does it affect your life? If things don't make sense, it will drive me bananas. And I'm sure many others, one of the major components of what attracts people to objectivism is that it makes the world make sense. <laughs> oh, Michael. But you have, when it comes to physics, when it comes to physics, modern physics is not going to make sense to you. Now, you could go study physics, but it's not going to make sense to you unless you're a physicist. And my question to you is, why do you care? Why do you need to know every last detail in physics? Now, it's true. Our enemies use physics to try to argue that our philosophy is wrong. But it's not going to be us, the non-physicists, who are going to answer them. You just have to stick by whatever physics says. It can't contradict the law of identity. Because, and you can explain to them how, by trying to contradict the law of identity, they are actually putting themselves into a contradiction. I did answer the question, by the way, and I said that infinity doesn't exist. Now, what is the shape of the universe if infinity doesn't exist? I don't know. Nobody knows. And I'm not sure we have the tools right now to know. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm actually absolutely sure, that a layman who's not an expert in physics, it might be generations before laymen, uh, you know, the physicists get to the point where they can, uh, first of all, they discover these things and then give us the tools to understand them. It's just a, a realm of expertise that I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know. One of the most important things in life to be able to do is to say, I don't know. And to, to say, uh, you know, something doesn't make sense, therefore I have to have an answer to it. No, you don't. Uh, you know, when I studied quantum mechanics, and if you study quantum mechanics, you will discover that it doesn't make sense given the terminology being used. Given the way it's framed, quantum mechanics doesn't make sense. But it works. It's real. Whatever's happening is real. So you can say, I don't understand it. Maybe you can even say, nobody understands it. We still don't have a good explanation for the phenomena of quantum mechanics. But to say, I'm not a physicist, and I have to have an explanation for quantum mechanics, is, is going to drive you crazy. Why did the stock market go, what did it do yesterday? It went either up or down, would be my guess. Um, so why did it go, let, let, let's see. Well, I don't know what it, it's going up. I guess the NASDAQ is down and the Dow is up. The NASDAQ is down and the Dow is up right now. Why are they diverging? Why aren't they going in the same direction? What is this about? What's causing them to move at all? Why are people, what happened? Why, I, I told you that the S&P 500 is down, up 20% this year, or, or tech stocks up 22% this year, why? And 99% of us should say, I don't know, don't know. And you could even say, given the, the, the philosophy of the culture and given what's going on in the world, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. And you can say, it doesn't make sense to me. If I really, really, really am interested, I'll go study that. I'll go try to figure it out. But I don't have the time right now, so I'm going to move on. I mean, if you stopped and had to really delve into everything that didn't make sense to you, there would be no end. So I'm sorry, but you really need to think about 
why young objectivists do this. I remember I did it. Why the young objectivists so spent, and I was studying physics. I mean, I, I was studying physics, but I took classes in college on physics, in physics, because it was required for my degree. Why the young, why the young objectivists spend so much time thinking and worrying about physics, abstract concepts in physics, when it doesn't matter? It doesn't make sense to you. Okay. It doesn't make sense to physicists either. So uh, what I'm trying to do is encouraging you to acknowledge what you don't know and to accept it. And where that lack of knowledge is interfering with your ability to live a great life, dig deep, figure it out. But where it's really not, if you're really objective about it, if you really think it through, it's not interfering with your ability to live a great life, then let it go. Let it go. I mean, I love history, but there's a lot I don't know. I, I, I know there's much, much more that I don't know than, than I do know. That's true almost of every field of study I've ever studied. There's a lot, I'm a generalist, that's part of the problem, but there's a lot more I don't know than I do know. And there's a lot of things in the world that don't make any sense. What objectivism provides you is principles that make philosophic sense. But the question infinity is not, you know, it's a physics question in terms of it, it, when it comes to the shape of the universe. Philosophy tells you things are finite. Everything is finite. That's philosophy tells you. But science uh, and the scientific reason and the shape of the universe and things like that, that's science. That's specialization. That requires specialized knowledge. And you're not going to have that. You can't have specialized knowledge in every field which you don't understand. I don't understand a lot of things. What, what, what does make sense to you? So focus on philosophy. Uh, and even there, focus on the basics of philosophy, the philosophy that really contributes to your life, contributes to your decision-making, contributes to under your understanding of the world in which you are acting, not in the subatomic particle world where you're not acting, unless you're a subatomic world engineer or, or dealing with it like, I don't know, like, like uh, building hardware and computers. And then make sure that the philosophy that you need to know makes sense to you. I mean, Ayn Rand talked about philosophy for Reardon as compared to philosophy for, um, for uh, uh, Ragnar. Ragnar, if you remember, the pirate in Atlas Shrugged, was a philosophy major. He was a philosopher pirate, which is pretty cool, I think. I can't think of many things more cool than a philosopher pirate. Um, and Reardon was a businessman. Reardon needs to know philosophy, but not to the level that a philosopher needs to know it. So make sure that the things you need to know, you understand, and they make sense to you. If something you're really, really curious about and it's important to you, and knowledge in that field is accessible, then go for it. You always want to know more. Knowledge is a good thing, generally. But accept that the things you will never know, accept that the things that you don't know, accept that the things that are overly specialized for you, and, and, and live with that. All right. Thank you, Michael, that $200. I appreciate the question.